Even though my cast iron collection is larger than what you see in most kitchens, I still succumbed to temptation and ended up buying the Lodge cast iron pie plate. The package came with a flyer showing the other pieces in Lodge's new bakeware collection. Since Lodge opened its new second foundry in 2016, they've been releasing newly designed cast iron pans at the rate of several each year. Last year, they introduced their Blacklock series of cast iron pans, and now in 2020, they've released a new line of cast iron especially meant for baking. This includes several pieces we've never seen from Lodge until now, including a 15-inch flat pizza pan, a 9 by 13 casserole dish, an even bigger rectangular baking dish, and a cast iron pan especially for making pies. But then again, we can easily make a pie in a traditional cast iron skillet, and it's certain to come out just as good as a pie baked in a pie dish. So why do we need a cast iron pan especially for making pies? Well, if you're someone who does a lot of baking, you probably already have at least one pie plate in your kitchen, even though you also have a cast iron skillet. And a cast iron pie plate is certain to last the rest of your life, which is more than you can say about those disposable aluminum pie plates. What's more, a cast iron pan will bake a pie crust much better than a glass pie plate. So considering this, let's compare the Lodge cast iron pie pan to a cast iron skillet and see what happens when we make a pie in each of these pans. Weighing in at 3 pounds and 9 ounces, the Lodge cast iron pie pan is much lighter than a typical 10 inch skillet from Lodge. Unlike a typical pie plate, it has lifting handles which are really useful for taking a hot pie out of the oven. And of course, it's made of cast iron and this makes it much better for heating the bottom crust of a pie than those worthless aluminum foil pie plates. The saying, you get what you pay for, is as accurate as you can get here because you can be certain this pie plate will last the rest of your life. On the other hand, this is a vintage Lodge cast iron skillet. It's a number six size, which is unusual for Lodge, but it's exactly the same size as the Lodge pie plate with a diameter of nine inches. The inside of this pan is deeper than the Lodge pie plate, and yet it still weighs exactly the same as the pie plate. Because of this, this skillet should give us a good pie as well. So we'll be making not one, but two apple pies, because two pies are better than one. Alton Brown may not like unitaskers in his kitchen, but I've had a lot of fun using this apple peeler slicer corer thingy. It made the task of peeling and slicing 16 apples a lot faster than peeling them by hand. And it looks like we have just enough of this left. <laughs> We're doubling the ingredients here because we're making two pies rather than one. This crust recipe is a bit different from most pie crusts because I like flavoring the crust using ground cardamom. It's also very important to whisk the dry ingredients together because that helps to incorporate air into the crust and it will puff up more than a typical pie crust rather than becoming bone dry. You don't have to use a food processor to mix your pie crust. I prefer using a mixer or even mixing it by hand. Just mix in the butter until there are still small pieces of butter spread throughout the flour. And now we use a secret ingredient, alcohol. This helps to flavor the crust and just as important, mixing in alcohol doesn't form as much gluten to keep the crust from becoming too tough. It doesn't thicken into dough until we add half a cup of water and then we can just let the mixer do the kneading for us. I'd say this dough is ready. It doesn't require a lot of kneading for the dough to be ready. Just roll it into a big ball because too much kneading will toughen the crust. There we go. That was easy. Then we separate the dough into four smaller balls, enough for two pies. And we have dough balls for two pies. Now we just let them chill. We wrap the dough in plastic and let it chill in the fridge. And while the dough is chilling, we can prepare our pie filling. 
Some special ingredients in this pie filling include more apple liquor for flavor, along with a touch of apple cider vinegar to activate the baking powder in the crust, and a lot of brown sugar, sugar, some cornstarch, and of course, cinnamon. I'm not a fan of using nutmeg and allspice in an apple pie because I like a pie that tastes like apples rather than a pumpkin pie. And once the filling is ready, it's time to bring out the cast iron. Here is the Lodge cast iron pie pan. And here is a vintage Lodge number no. 6 skillet. We grease our pans with shortening and now we can roll out the pie crusts. One trick to easily rolling out the crust is using two sheets of wax paper. Place the dough between the wax paper and roll out the crust. We need to roll out the crust until it's bigger than the pie plate. Then we can flip it over and position the crust in the pie plate. If there are any gaps in the crust, we can fix them by tearing off unused pieces of dough and pressing them in to fill the gaps. And the first pie crust is ready. Now we roll out a crust for the second pie and do the same thing with a cast iron skillet. The skillet is deeper than the pie plate, but that's not the fault of the pie plate. On the other hand, the deeper pan may make it a little more tricky to take out a finished piece of pie. And now we add the apple filling. The important part is to make sure the apples are flat because they will soften as the pie bakes. And that is what causes gaps underneath the crust. And we fill her up, then tap the pan to make sure the apples are secure and won't move. Yes, and they're not moving. Very good. Tap a tap a tap. -a. Yeah. Now we roll out the upper crust. Bam. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about pinching it closed. Okay. All right. So you come along, do that, and you seal the pie. You just want to, you know, just delicately. We crimp the edges with our fingers to give a fluted crust around the edge. And from here, we take a knife and cut out slits in the crust. This is to release steam as the pie bakes. Finally will come the egg wash, although I should do the other pie first because I don't want the egg wash to soak in. And with the second pan, we're doing a lattice pie crust. This fancy design takes a lot of effort, but the end result is worth it, and it isn't especially hard. It just takes a lot of patience. We lay down a row of dough strips, all in one direction. Then we fold back every other strip. Now we lay one dough piece down the center, and we fold the dough strips back, and then fold back every other strip. And we keep doing it again, and again, and again. And finally, we crimp the edges of this pie to produce a full lattice pie crust. And now for an easy egg wash. Add one egg to the reserved apple juice and mix it together thoroughly. And all we do now is paint the top of the pie and cover every inch with the egg wash. And for a final touch, we sprinkle crystal baking sugar over the top. Now we paint our lattice pie with the egg wash and sprinkle sugar over this one. Then one additional step. We cover the lattice pie with foil. This is to keep the apples from drying out because we want the apples to soften as they bake. And at last, our pies go into the oven. Both the lodge pie pan and the skillet pie. However, after 35 minutes, we remove the foil from the lattice pie, so both pies will bake uncovered for another 15 minutes. And at last, the pies are ready. One was baked in the new lodge cast iron pie plate and the other baked in a vintage large cast iron skillet. So which pie is better? The only way to tell is to let the pies cool off and see for ourselves. I was especially proud of how this pie turned out. 
The crust was flaky and tasty, and the apples were well cooked, deliciously sweet, with just a bit of tartness, which you would never get from a store-bought pie. On the other hand, the lattice pie also gave a delicious pie that no one could say no to. So the final question is, do we need a cast iron pie plate if we already have a cast iron skillet? I really can't answer this for you because as we saw here, both pans gave a wonderful pie. The large cast iron pie pan is definitely a luxury, but for anyone who bakes pies regularly, a pie plate isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. It's much better than a typical pie plate from either glass or aluminum. It's easier to handle than a typical pie plate because it's made from cast iron and it will definitely give you a well-baked pie, not to mention lasting for the rest of your life. And of course, Lodge has been in business for over 120 years and their cast iron pans are definitely the best quality you can get in modern day cast iron pans, especially at this price. And of course, with the holidays just around the corner, one of these would make a great present under the tree as well. And if that's not enough, remember this is still a cast iron pan and you can do things with it that you definitely can't do with a glass pie plate. If you're a serious baker, or even not so serious, you can definitely give this a try and know that it's not going to sit on your shelf gathering dust. You'll get a lot of use out of this pie pan, and that in itself makes it a great reason to give this a try. Finally, I should say Lodge did not send me this pie pan as a promotional gift. I bought it myself because I'm a satisfied customer, and I'm proud to use Lodge cast iron in my kitchen. The Lodge Pie Plate is a great addition to my collection, and I'll be having a lot of fun making more pies with this. I hope you've enjoyed this, and thank you for watching.